Hello everyone. Today we are going to understand the concept of private endpoints on Azure. These private endpoints enables you to connect your virtual machines and things like that in a virtual network privately to Azure platform as a service services such as databases and app services or storage accounts. And today we are going to understand how private endpoint works and how to configure that on Azure. To get a solid understanding, we are going to create this demo. As you can see, I will be deploying a database, an SQL Server database here, and a virtual network. And inside of that virtual network, there will be a subnet. And inside of that subnet, I'm deploying this virtual machine, and I will be installing SSMS in that virtual machine. After that, I'm going to show you how to connect from that virtual machine to database server with the public endpoint that this SQL server exposes and then I'm going to remove that public access and create a private endpoint in this virtual network and I'm going to show you how you can access the same database server with a private IP address. Since we have removed public access to this database, it will be something like sitting within the same virtual network. So there are a few things that you should know about when you work with Azure private endpoints. By enabling private endpoints, you're bringing the service into your virtual network. And the service that you're connecting to will receive a private IP of that virtual network. And this will allow you to connect privately and securely your VM to the Azure Platform as a Service resource. And this also enables the connectivity between virtual networks regionally and globally peered virtual networks and on-premises connections as well. One of the most important things to understand is that the DNS configuration. So basically, let's say you're connecting um, to this database server from this virtual machine. Basically, when you do that, you can access that database, not with the IP. You can use the fully qualified domain name of that database server. There will be a DNS service deployed within this virtual network to help you with this. And that is a key point that you should understand when you work with Azure private endpoints. So now that you have an understanding on how it all works, let's try to implement what we have just talked about on Azure now. I have prepared this script to create the resources that we need on Azure. I have mainly did this to save time because we don't have to spend our time creating these resources on Azure manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this resource group on Azure and then a virtual machine and a SQL server and a database. And I will be adding a firewall rule to connect to this SQL server from my local machine. As you can see, the resources are getting created. We have just created all the resources that we need on Azure. If you scroll a bit up, as you can see this IP address to the VM, and I'm going to RDP into this IP address and install SSMS. Um, and as you can see, I have opened Internet Explorer and I'm going here to download and install SSMS. Now we have this in place. Let's go to Azure portal and uh, let's try to connect it. And I'm going into the resource group that we have created. As you can see, we have a um, few resources here, a virtual network, a virtual machine and our database server and the database and a uh, one network interface. Now let me go into my database server and copy this server name and let me go back to the virtual machine and paste it here. And I'm going to change this to SQL Server Authentication. And let me add the password here. As you can see, I can connect to that database from the virtual machine. And also I can connect to that virtual machine from our local machine as well. So let me try to show you that now. All right. As you can see, the database is a public resource now. Now let me go to Azure portal again and go to this resource group and then this database server. And if you go to firewall and virtual network section, there's an option for you to 
deny public network access but that is currently disabled and that is because we haven't created a private endpoint access for this SQL server now I'm going to create this private endpoint by clicking this here and as you can see we're going to create this private endpoint and it is asking me the resource group that I want these resources to be in uh, I'm going to keep this as it is and I'm going to name this and then I'm going to keep this region because that is where we have deployed my other resources as well and next we have to select the resource type so basically with these private endpoints you can connect to many other Microsoft resources since we're using a SQL server now I'm going to select that resource type like this then I'm going to select this server and after that I'm going into the configuration section as you can see here this is the important thing because we have to integrate private DNS because even though we are accessing an IP that is deployed within our virtual network we should be able to access it with a domain name so that's why we are doing it so let me select the uh, the resource group and I'm going to keep all the other configurations as default and I'm going to click next and go to review and create and everything is okay and then let me create as you can see we are deploying the private endpoint now you will have to wait for around uh, two to three minutes uh, maybe even less for this let's see what happens all right now as you can see our resource is ready let me click on go to resource there are a few interesting things if you look into this area of this resource there's a virtual network subnet specified and a network interface and a private link resource as well so this is something really interesting because this creates a network interface inside of that virtual network so let me go to the resource group again and show all the resources this created inside of that virtual network yeah as you can see let me group this by type and we have this virtual network if you go inside of that earlier there was only this network interface and that is the network interface of our virtual machine and now we have this another interface and it has its own IP address and that IP address is uh, 10.0.0.5 as you can see and I'm going back to this um, resource group and here you will see a private DNS zone and this will direct the DNS traffic for those Azure resources to our local endpoint if you go here you will be able to see here the name is my primary server this is the name of my database server and the value is my local IP address and if I go back there's this uh, new network interface as well now that we have a good understanding on the things that this created on our resource group let me go to my SQL server and firewall and networking section and as you can see here now we can deny public network access let me click on it and click save all right now let me open up my local SSMS instance here and I'm going to disconnect and let me try to connect again as you can see I cannot connect to that database from my local machine now let me do the same on my virtual machine I'm going to disconnect this service and click connect and let me insert the password again all right as you can see I can still log into this server from this virtual machine and we have successfully enabled private link to our database server from the virtual machine there's one last thing that you should see and that is um, let me copy this IP address and open up command prompt and I'm going to do a ping to this um, this domain name here let me do that and see what happens you can notice the IP address and that is a local IP address of my virtual network hope you learned something new today if you have any questions or comments you can leave in the comments below please subscribe if you want to be updated with my future videos and thanks for watching